In this episode of DU Nation, we take a ride with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as they conduct this year's waterfowl breeding population and habitat survey. These surveys began in 1947, and they are a collaborative effort between the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Canadian Wildlife Service, and state and provincial wildlife agencies. Their primary purpose is to provide information on the spring population, size, and trajectory of 19 North American duck species, Canada geese, American coot, and swans, and to evaluate habitat conditions by counting waterfowl breeding ponds. So we're about ready to start here in Jamestown, North Dakota this morning. We've been down for two days for rain. Uh, prior to that, we made pretty good progress. The overall conditions this year are looking pretty good. Sky's clear, winds are calm, and it should be a good observation morning. The survey is conducted from the ground and the air over a two million square mile area covering North America's principal breeding areas. This includes parts of Alaska, Canada, and the North Central U.S. The surveys are extremely important from the perspective, of course, of setting waterfowl seasons each and every year and having those long-term data sets let us see what's going on as far as different populations, um, increases, decreases over time, as well as the habitat, what the habitat's doing. But from a perspective of Ducks Unlimited, it's also extremely important because this allows us to kind of set our conservation management planning strategies. It lets us know where areas are being heavily used by waterfowl, which habitats are extremely important. So there's always a lot of excitement around the surveys when they're coming out. People want to know what's going on. What does the, what's the fall flight going to look like for, for hunters? But they also want to know, they really care about what waterfowl populations are doing. And they feel good about the work that they are able to do through supporting Ducks Unlimited and the conservation work that we're doing on the ground because of these great supporters and members. Take off ferry to whatever lines we fly, uh, transects as we call them, and each of the transects is broken into 18 mile segments. And we're counting everything we see out 200 meters from the airplane. We start uh, online and we'll begin, uh, my observer will count out the right side of the airplane and I'll count out the left side of the airplane as I'm flying. And as we go down each segment, we're looking out 200 meters and we're trying to count every uh, duck or goose that we see and we classify them as singles, pairs, or flock drakes. So we're looking, pair counts is the big thing, it's a breeding waterfowl survey. So we're looking for pairs of all the different species. We're looking for all the, anything that we see and we count them, but it's a pair count mainly. Obviously the biggest challenge we have uh, while we're flying the survey is we fly the survey between 100 and 150 feet above ground level. And the biggest challenge we have are the obstacles that are out there. There's towers and power lines and net towers, cell towers, old UHF TV antennas, you name it. And those are all taller than what we fly. So we're constantly vigilant for that kind of uh, object that basically will do great harm to us. So the biggest challenge is avoiding the obstacles. And then, of course, we run into birds that are flying as well. You know, ducks, pelicans, hawks, you name it. There are a lot of birds out there flying. Um, we'll do our best, obviously, to miss those too. And then uh, the other big challenge we have this time of year in the spring when we're doing this is the crop sprayers are out and they're down at our level too. We know for a fact that we don't see them all. Certain ducks will get in the reeds, certain ones are small, sun glare, the way, uh, the way the sun's glaring off the water any given morning makes the species incredibly difficult to call sometimes. Um, so then on certain segments that are representative of the habitat that we're flying over uh, that we have a uh, ground crew a four-person ground crew that will walk out and they will actually walk every wetland all the way down that 18 miles the assumption being that they're seeing everything and it corrects our numbers for the difficulties we have flying at 90 knots and 150 feet and getting one shot to count the, to count the salute so yep another okay. uh pair of scalp, scalp drake, mallard drake, pair of blue wing teal. This is my 15th year flying the surveys now and the, the probably the the most fascinating thing I've seen doing this is just the wet dry cycles you know uh, the duck numbers go up and down as I always call them they're a commodity kind of like corns or soy soybeans if we have a lot of water we have a lot of ducks if we don't have a lot of water we don't have a lot of ducks but 
seeing the landscape changes um, just with annual precipitation variation and then the agricultural practices over the years. A lot of tile drainage, a lot of wetland drainage, a lot of uh, subdivisions on the landscape now, a lot of wind turbines on the landscape now. Just all that stuff certainly impacts the waterfowl habitat. And so those are over the 15 years of flying these surveys. I think that's the biggest thing I've noticed. Um, just uh, how much more in tune I got to the precipitation cycles and then just what's going on on the landscape. It's, it's pretty amazing to see what we're doing to the landscape from a duck's perspective.